How y'all doing? I want to welcome y'all to Strawberry Space, where we discuss transgender related topics. Directed to the trans community right now, it's everywhere. And I think the greatest weapon that I can contribute is trans joy and comedy and talking about hard, you know, subjects and really intricate moments of a transition and try to let everybody in to see that, you know, I'm not a monster. I'm not somebody that you know um is trying to to do anything but be myself and be happy thank you everybody for that support how do you stay on your own path where do you draw boundaries where do you find the strength to keep being the joy well i think having my chosen family and the people that i love to take care of me but i also think there's something just about uh making sure that you're you don't put something out there before you're ready and and really just surrounding yourself with good people it's interesting because i look at someone like you and i can't imagine anybody disliking you oh please do you know do you want to know, ironically, who uh, dislikes me the most sometimes? Who? Myself. Oh, me too. Oh. And, but, I guess. Hey, Strawberry Space. So today we are covering Dylan Mulvaney. She is a trans TikToker. She's actually really gorgeous. She's a model, so their um, site credited for that video. She was on the Drew Barrymore show. So we love her ever since Scream, 51st Dates, Charlie's Angels, E.T. You know, she has been everywhere. So uh, I don't know how many people, uh, cisgender men and women of Strawberry Space, don't know what FFS is, but that's what Dylan had had. Uh, virtually uh, online, you know, it stands for facial feminization surgery. It's pretty normal for us, you know, in our community. She's documenting day by day, and she's actually um, has this thing where day 365 is the one year of her being a woman, and she's actually turned it into a play. So, girl, she didn't want awards. She got rich friends. She is just, you know, doing her thing. So, uh, I'm going to play some screen recordings via her uh, Instagram of, like, you know, just some stuff of her. And actually, she didn't got, like, I I think she trademarked a shirt, if I'm not mistaken, like day two of girlhood, day 25 of girlhood, day 88 of girlhood. So she got a girlhood shirt. I mean, this is just coinsy. Check it out and then we'll talk about it. 249 of being a girl and this video is to all the queer and trans kids and teens out there who have been following along on my journey. Hello. First of all, I'm kind of honored that you've accepted me as one of your own since I'm on the Gen Z millennial cusp. But most importantly, I am in awe of you. You give me so much hope. I'm like enamored. I wish that I could be as strong as y'all are being right now. You are my heroes. And I know that you probably want to rush into adulthood. I get that. That was so me growing up. And I don't know what your home life looks like. I hope that your family's accepting. You know, that's how every family should be. And congrats if yours is. But a lot of families are not. And to those of you who don't have an accepting family or safe space, I get how frustrating it is to not be allowed to step into your true self. But believe it or not, your parents think that they have your best interest at heart. They do. They think they are protecting you from something, something scary. But that's because adults fear what they don't know. You know, they might not have a lot of gay people or trans people in their lives. And some of your parents might even hate me and my videos. And all of that anger and the judgment, it's really just fear. It scares them that they don't have the resources or the life experience or the ability to look into a crystal ball and see that your future is going to be incredible. 
Growing up as a kid, I always looked at the adults around me as all perfect and all knowing. But now that I am an adult, here's a secret. It feels like we're all just kind of still kids trying to figure it out. And don't discredit your intuition because you know yourself better than anyone will ever know you, even your loved ones. And if your family isn't supportive right now, I just hope that you can find a safe group that will be your cheerleaders in the meantime. I got really close to a lot of my friends' parents growing up because they made me feel seen and they celebrated my queerness. And my family has made leaps and bounds in acceptance, truly. So I know that change is absolutely possible. I've seen it firsthand. Just remember that there are so many of us out here ready to celebrate you. And I know that you're excited to be an adult. I couldn't wait to turn 18. But please don't feel rushed in any of this. Enjoy your childhood. Ask for what you need when you need it. Um, I grew up too fast and sometimes I regret it. And I'm trying to pick up those pieces now. And maybe you don't have to. And lastly, make other trans and queer friends at this age. I used to compare myself to the other gay kids at school like it was some kind of competition. And I wish that I would have befriended all of them. It would have made our lives so much easier because there is strength in numbers. And I can't promise that you won't feel alone sometimes. Even as an adult, I still feel alone quite often. But it will be worth it when you have those perfect movie moments with other queer people or when you find love or when your dreams start coming true and you deserve all of those things. And I can't wait for everything you accomplish because your queerness is your superpower. Your transness is magic. And I wish that I could tell that to little Dylan right now, but I can't. So I'm going to tell you instead. I see you and I love you. Thank you for being here. Please stick around. I love you. We're at the Grammys. She's on my vision board this year. You were on my 2023 vision board, and now I'm finally getting to meet. It's only February. I was on your 2023 vision board. You were. That's lovely. It's insane that you're like documenting so much of your life. Make sure you keep things for yourself. Everything cannot be for the public. They love it. Yes. They love it, but everything cannot be for them. Yes, you I must just keep things for I yourself. just did my FFS. And I know, I, girl, we know. I, it's I, all over TikTok. I, thank you, baby. I, I, <laughs> I want to say to everyone who's supporting her, thank you. I think it's really important that we have support cry. from people and love from folks. And I see all the love that you give her and it's so important. And it's not just important for her, it's important for all the trans people out there who maybe aren't getting that support. Please give that love yes. that you give to us to every trans person. Absolutely. Thank you. Love y'all. Isn't she just an angel, y'all? It's the love ya for me. I love that for her. Okay, so you know I wouldn't be meeting trans men and women in strawberry space without some constructive criticism. I'm, I'm just going to be real. Now, before doing this video, I didn't know if she was actually trans because I'm used to being around, like, you know, trans women of African-American experience who socially transition when you, like, mentally a emotionally transition, not medically, it's kind of hard for me to know. Like, I was looking for the makeup, the hair, the lashes, the implants, the, the, the everything. Even though she did get FFS, I will credit her for that. Um, and thank God Medicaid is making it, you know, so much more affordable for us to do that. Um, you know, I didn't know if she was actually trans until I researched her. And I guess for me, it's the name. Like, she, you know, Dorenda or something or, or D -D Delicious or D Daisha or something. Kind of Dorothy, you know, but it, D Dylan is what she wants, you know, is what she wants. I guess Dylan is kind of like Alex. Like, it could be a, a, a name that could be for both. So I'm happy for her. She may still has some room to grow for, you know, um, some the girls, you know, a little bit of breast, a little bit of cleavage, a little bit of something, something. And, you know, to change her name. So she is fairly fresh and new. A little story time, Strawberry Space. Because I was once, you know, I transitioned when I was 19. And my name wasn't changed yet at 18. And, you know, it was hard for me to find a name. Actually, my mom's name is Sarah. And she drunk Sierra Miss before she passed away. And I took care of her when she had breast cancer. So I, my name was Sierra May. So I kind of did like that. 
And I was really going to go hard on her, like, girl, this ain't a woman, you know what I'm saying? Where is her hips? Where is her body? Where is the, the this and that? And, I, you know, you always have a woman on public TV trying to represent the whole community with, you know, wrong representation. But then I said to myself, who am I? Like, if I were on the show, people would probably talk about my voice or how, you know, my arms are veiny or, you know, because let me tell you something, Charbet says, a girl can look beautiful, but what to some people, once you tell everyone that she's trans, now all of a sudden those voluptuous legs are big, huge, you know, strong with calf muscles, everything is masculinized and it's just horrible. So when I started uh, FaceTiming my friends, um, you know, and they're like 100% comfortable, you know, just being on FaceTime with me in the house and out the house. So when they're in the house, they be dressing naked. You know, we're all girls. Me, however, I just put my phone on the bed and let them see the ceiling fan. So, you know, my friends was one day like, who are also trans. Girl, you don't have to be ashamed to, you know, get undressed around us or, you know, take your wig off around us. You know, we're girls. And this relates to Dylan's story because, like her, I was looking for a roadmap, but I went, you know, to shave. And these girls who are my friends are younger than me was like, why are you shaving? I said, what you mean? They was like, you don't do laser? I said, I've never done laser. And they was like, hold up, bitch. You done been transitioning almost 10 years and you haven't done laser. You're supposed to do that first. And I thought immediately of Dylan. Because I didn't want to do the story at first, but I love her story because she's doing what she wants to do first. She's doing her look. Now she's doing her play. Now she's doing her achievements. She's doing what she wants to do in the order that she wants to do it. Because when my friends told me I was supposed to do that first, I was like, hold up. There's no, you know, beginner's manual to transitioning. I don't have to do, because let's be very clear. I hopped on the surgery table first. Then I got my name changed. Then I got hormones. I didn't take hormones first. That's a lot of people don't understand so like I said, I graduated at 18. I was I got held back because I walked the stage at 18 and then months later I was 19. So I was in the South. I had family up north. So in order to get my um GED, it just switched over to the diploma and get enough credits to go to college, I was accepted in uh in Mississippi. But, you know, I had to get, you know, my electives out of the way and I went to job court in New York. So I went and I visited my cousins over in Texas and I met this trans girl who told me about hormones. So before I went to the college, I was like, okay, I got to go to, you know, just finish up my classes real quick. So I flew up there. Mind you, side note. It's called the China Bus, but online it's called Wanderer Bus or something. I think it's still available now. It's like for people who live in the South, they're going to take you to New York. And it's called the China Bus because they'll take you in the heart of Manhattan in Chinatown for like $15, $24. So back on track, I went to Chinatown on the China Bus to New York to go to school. And when I went there... You know, I'm the, I picture this now, a whole bus full of Oriental, Vietnamese, Chinese, whatever. I hope I'm not offending nobody. Um, and I'm the only black person on the bus. And so I just see automatically these two girls, sisters, um, pull out all this yarn looking thing. It was like, a, it was like yarn material. And they put it through their teeth. One girl leaned back in the recliner. They were in the back of the bus by the bathroom. And she started um, yarning the girl. So I will just look back. I was, just, no, I'm, you know, just me. I'm young. I'm nosy. So uh, I was like, what are y'all doing? And she was threading. She threaded the girl's eyebrows. 
So I was like, wow, this is really interesting. She said, give me $10 and I'll do you next. And all the girls did it. I did it too. So then she, um, when I, when I was my turn, she gave me the gel. It really hurt y'all. It was like, bow, 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 bow. She was popping it with her, um, with the, the thread needle in her, uh, teeth. And you know, they're like everywhere in New York and Chinatown. They're like bodegas. So it was something new for me from the South to up North. So she, um, I had to close my eyes because it was hurt so much. And I had to like grab my jacket. It was so much. I was in pain. So she tapped me underneath my nose on my lips and was like, you want to keep this? Like, you know, you want this? And I was like, what you mean? And she was talking about my mustache. I, uh, strawberry space. If y'all know what it's like before you transition or even as you're transitioning or even as a gay male going in the barbershop. Because I wanted them to take it off in the barbershop initially. So she was my Lord and Savior. She took it off for me. And I didn't have to go. My brows was on fleek. She got my mustache off and together. It burned. She gave me the gel. Everything was good. And I guess it was better than doing laser because I just already put that in the category with, you know, chemical peels. And I just didn't want my face to get burned and discoloration and dark. And, you know, I just had, you know, uh, what I saw online, bad experiences. And I just was, I don't know, even to this day, it's just something that just don't sound right about somebody burning something off my face and my skin being affected. Because, you know, I had eczema growing up. And, you know, I told my, you know, trans sisters who are younger than me who, because I've been out trans for almost 10 years. Like, yeah, I've never, you know, really lasered. Um, with wax, though, I don't like waxing because waxing, they told me I would have to grow my hair a little more to wax. And they would take some tweezers or pliers and, then, you know, try to pull it out my. And I'm like, you know, I could have did that myself. And it just was very painful. And there was a excruciating experience I had that was so. Uh, it's just something I just don't want to talk about because I remember one time the girl was like, well, you got a hot date, hot date, you know, because I wanted to wax my face and then I wanted my belly, my happy trail and my um, armpits. So she did all that. You know, there's there's hard wax and there's soft wax. So she did the one with the bees with she uh, did the big tongs and it melted. And then um, when she did that, she waxed me. And so I pulled my shirt up and then she said, do you want this? And I could have sworn um, when I was younger, I thought she meant the bikini, but she meant Brazilian because I put my pants down and she was like, no, I want you to do all of this. So, y'all, when I tell you I just got my breast done, this is almost, uh, this is almost painful to say and speak about. But I prefer threading over waxing because... When I pulled my pants down, y'all, she didn't know I was trans. This is a Chinese older lady. Because, you know, now by this time, I'm going to Chinatown like every week. And she saw my penis. And, you know, of course, they talk in their language before they talk in English. And I just leaned back. I thought she knew. Because, you know, she was getting the fan and the baby powder together like a normal, I'm guessing, cisgender woman would. And she had to go get her daughter to come in and finish it. And she was like, I'll just be helping you today. And I was just like, you know, kind of was like, is everything all right? She was like, yeah, you know, we're just, we're just going to help you, you know, from now on. Like, I'm just, I'm going to be here for you. And Strawberry Space, I think this was a, like a little mom and pop shop. You'll never guess. I had enough money to get on the train, um, get some food, and then I was going to get wax and get my belly button pierced. So that's what I was going to have you know, um, everything clear so I could wear a crop top. 
And I never got a chance to get the crop top, the piercing, or the food because they overcharged me for the waxing. And I, I usually don't get the receipt for, you know, service-based things. When I buy items, I usually get the receipt, but they had offered a few, like, promotional products, like an oil and, you know, a buffer for my skin when I go in the shower so I can exfoliate. Because, you know, when you exfoliate, it makes the waxing easier. And I was wondering because I thought I, I, I calculated it right. Even with tax, I was like, well, why is my money? Strawberry space, strawberry space, strawberry space. This lady charged me for a manzillion. Not a Brazilian, a manzillion. The men's Brazilian wax. And it wasn't even that hairy. And I just was in shock like... like like I know, I, I know, I still had a penis at that moment, and now I have an orchiectomy, so I don't even grow hair like that anyway. Now, thank God, you know, do the low testosterone. But it just hurt me that she saw a man in that moment, even with my titties, and I just that just. It fucked with my head for a long time. I went from European wax center to wax center to, you know, electric trimmers. Cause I eventually had to stop. Cause you know, with, with them little waxing centers and the franchise and companies, you know, you'll get someone's card and information and ask for them. And by the time, you know, you get accustomed to somebody, they will be gone and then you have to show your face to somebody else and your whole body to somebody else and then they'll be here talking about you like you a you an animal or you an alien or you're a freak just because you know you have a different type of body and I just now I take care of myself but it was just a dark part of my time and there were times where I wouldn't care like I would just go out hairy because I was afraid of showing my body to somebody and I just couldn't I didn't know about Andy's or walls or clippers or anything to do and I just would you know shave because you know I'm a military so I just told my friends yeah I'm used to shaving and I wouldn't mind lasering my legs or my armpits as of now but uh and then you know LUX has a portable uh lamp laser just like for light not as many watts as the laser that they have at the actual spa, but just so, you know, uh, the CeraVe and the hydration, hypo, some hypoallergenic acid or whatever the long name is, you put on your body just to be, you know, soft with some noxema, just to take care of, you know, my daily regimen and then the toner. Cause I just didn't want to put no laser on my face, but I had to do something because I was walking around for the rest of my time in New York, the little bit of time I was there before I went to college, like a Wolverine <laughs> with a purse, claiming I'm a woman, you know, but just looking all rough in the face and unibrow you know, and all, all because I had a bad experience and I immediately thought of Dylan and that's what made me do this video. She's a gorgeous woman. She has beautiful natural hair. And um, she's the perfect way of like a, a different look of trans. She gives me old white woman. And, you know, not all trans look the same. You don't have to medically transition to transition. I just want biological people to know that. So I just wanted to share that experience with you, trans women and men of strawberry space, because you know, I really put that behind me, and yeah, it was um, it was a hard thing to explain to my friends on Facetime because I never went through that, and I never shared that with anyone. And it's not like my face is hairy, and I'm just so blessed I don't have any bumps. But even if I did have any razor. Uh, I would just cover it up with makeup. It was never enough, it was, you know. And I just and like I said. Now they have threading all over now, like, you know, in malls and stuff. And it's just easily acceptable. It's, it's easy to get reached to. But Dylan is doing a tremendous job. 
Uh, I'm so happy she is striving. Um, I'm looking forward to more, you know, day 45, you know, day uh, uh, 562, day 601. I want to definitely, you know, support her in more ways than one to add her already on TikTok. And here at Starbase Space, we support her journey. So this has been Strawberry Space, and thank you.